Welcome to the fifth design challenge in our computer science cohort of cohorts. In this design challenge, we're going to begin using the Key Studio 37 in 1 sensor kit that they market for microbit. In this particular video, we're going to actually be using this for Arduino um, for the two design challenge that were part of the week five assignment. So we'll do the first design challenge, which was using an external push button or digital push button to control an LED module um, so that it stays on as long as we hold the button down. Then we're going to do the same thing, to, but use the same equipment, but we're going to modify it so that we use the external digital push button to control an LED such that the push button acts as a switch that pressed once turns the LED on and pressed a second time turns the LED off. Now, one thing to note as we get into this work is that in this sensor kit, the natural state of the push button is high. And when we press the button, it reports a low. So it actually opens the circuit when we press a low versus closing it. A lot of times when we use switches, that's the opposite. So that'll affect how we code. We'll talk about that later. I'm going to be using a Arduino Uno, the R3. Um, but if you use an Arduino Nano, as is drawn in the documents linked in, in the description below, um, it'll work the exact same way. Your Arduino will just be considerably smaller, uh, but you'll have access to the same pins that we'll use. So to get started, we're going to need an Arduino. We're going to use a breadboard. We'll need the digital push button from the Key Studio sensor kit, and we'll need the Key Studio LED module. Um, the other thing I'll point out is that I have attached female to female jumper cables. So there's a female jumper cable connected to the pins, to each of the pins on the modules, and it has a female end. But in order to use our breadboard, I'm going to need to connect male to male jumper cables that will go male from the cable here to male on the breadboard below. Now, because this is an introductory video, in case you've not used a breadboard before, I wanted to spend just a little bit of time explaining how this is going to work. Anytime we use, we're trying to prototype an electronics, breadboards become a really valuable asset. This would be considered a full-size board. It's very long. Um, you might have a half-size board that came with the kit that is, you know, give or take a half of this. They come in all shapes and sizes. Um, but generally, most breadboards work the same way. In, in this breadboard, and most likely any breadboard you would have as a beginner, um, the rows are each connected. So these are soldered together. So I've got, let's, let's look here at row 60. Try to get that close to the camera for you to see. So here on row 60, each pin, pin A, B, C, D, and E, are all soldered together. What that allows me to do is to place one cable or one component in pin E and another cable or component in pin, let's say, C. And in, by because I connected those in the same row, it's as if I've soldered these two wires together. So these solderless breadboards allow us to use jumper cables to quickly make connections between components. And in many cases, we can even just plug the components directly into the breadboard without having to work through the process of soldering. The other two valuable pieces that we'll use regularly is on this breadboard, you'll see power rails and they're, they're identified with a blue for negative and a red for positive, and they're available on both sides. Now, what these, what these do, the power rails, are just soldered and connected all the way down the entire breadboard. So any of these positives on this side of the board are already all connected to each other. Same for the negatives. They're all connected to each other. They're not connected to the other side. So this positive is not connected to this positive. But these similarly are each connected all the way across. The, the red for positive and the blue for negative. Now, the red and the, the blue and the positive and negative labels are just that. They're just labels um, to help you keep track of what you're doing. Technically, these are just soldered um, female pins or terminals where you could plug a pin into. So you're, it's up to you to um, connect power appropriately so that the positive terminal from your power source and the negative terminal from your power source actually creates these as positive and negative rails. This is a great way to distribute power to each of, our, each of the components in our system. Both challenges require the same wiring schematic. So once we get this wired up, all we'll have to do is change the code in order to make sure that we've wired everything correctly and that our system operates as expected. So in this case, all we have to do is connect the digital push button and the LED module to the Arduino. 
So to do that, we can follow the image that was provided in the documentation if we don't know how to do this. But let's walk through the rationale. To get started, we're going to use the digital push button. And on the digital push button, you'll notice that we have three pins, S, V, and G. The S is going to be our signal pin. This is how we're going to send a signal to Arduino so it knows when the push button was used. It's going to send a signal that way. We're going to use the V to provide voltage or power to the button and G to ground the button. So we've already gone ahead and plugged in our female uh, jumper cables. Now all we need to do is grab three male-to-male -male jumper cables, connect them to each of these, and we're going to wire those up to our breadboard. As I go to connect my yellow cable to the breadboard, I, I realize at this point I've got nothing else plugged in. So I can really put it wherever I want, but since that yellow is my signal, I want to be mindful that I put it somewhere where I can connect on a, on a row or column. I want to put it somewhere where I can easily connect um, the Arduino. So I've got my yellow going to row, I'll put it at row 50, slot A on row 50. Um, I've got my ground, the gray and brown wire going to the blue power rail, the ground terminal or the ground row. And I've got my red wire going from my voltage to my positive power rail. So now I'm gonna go ahead and connect my Arduino to the breadboard. So I'm gonna find my five volt, which is my power. And I'm gonna send five volt from the Arduino. So here's our five volt. I'm gonna wire that over. You can see it's labeled on the inside there. I'm gonna wire that 5V into any slot on the power rail. So I'll just put it here. Those are all connected anyways. It doesn't matter where I put it on the power rail. It's now providing power um, to that part of the um, breadboard. I'm also going to connect ground. So I'll find one of the ground pins. There's one right here beside the power. I'm going to connect that to any of the ground pins on the Arduino. I'm going to go ahead and move this down just to give us a little bit more space and make it easier to see what's happening. So we're here in the Arduino IDE and we need to save our sketch. So we'll save that. I'll just save it as button sample and I'll replace it over the one that already existed. And we can get started with our code. Now, in this case, we don't have anything that's going to happen globally because this is a pretty simple program. Essentially, Arduino needs to know a few things. Remember, our void setup are those things that happen at the very beginning, and they don't get referenced any other times normally in the code. So in our setup, we need to tell Arduino what's happening um, with the components that have been attached. It doesn't currently know that there's something attached to pin D2 or to pin D3. It also doesn't know whether or not it should be sending information across those pins or receiving information across those pins. So that's that's going to be our first step anytime we're connecting, or one of our first steps anytime we're connecting components to our Arduino. So we'll say pin mode three, that's where our LED is connected. We need to tell it that's an output. And then we're going to go pin mode two. And we need to tell it that is an input. And that's all we're going to need to do in our setup. Now, when we get into the loop, we want to think about what are those things that should be constantly doing. And it's going to do these in order. Well, essentially, what we want it to do is we want it to do a digital read on the push button. We want it to constantly read and say, if it reads a low signal from digital from the digital pin 2 or a low signal from the push button, then the light should turn on. And as long as it's reading a low signal, the light should stay on. Else, meaning it's reading a high signal, it's going to keep pin 3 being running low, so or the LED being off. Now, this is a little bit unintuitive, but it's because of how the modules are made in the sensor kit. A lot of times we think of buttons as being when they're pressed, they generate a high signal, and when they're released, they generate a low signal. But that's just not how this kit was created, so we have to be mindful of that in our code. So we'll say, if digital read, we want to read pin 2, digital read pin 2, is equal to low. Remember, that means we have pressed the button. Then what should happen? Well, if it's written, if it's low or we've pressed the button, we want the light to turn on according to the design challenge. So we'll say digital write at pin three. And we want to write pin three to high. Or in other words, turn on the light. Now, else, if that's not true, so if pin two didn't read low, or in other words, pin two read high, then now we're going to digital write to pin three, a low signal, or we're going to turn it off. Now, in the provided code, we've commented this. I won't do that on video here. We provided comments that you can see what's happening in each line of code. 
So we'll save this. And the last thing we want to do is make sure that we have um, selected the proper port that we're sending this to our Arduino. Indeed, we are. Okay, so we'll save this code and then we will upload that to our connected Arduino. Uh oh, I have a syntax error. Let's fix that. Now let's upload and send it on. Okay, so we're back to our Arduino. It's wired up as we had done previously. We just downloaded the code. Let's press the button and see, did it work? We expect to press the button and the light turns on. And as long as we're holding the button down, it stays on. And when we release it, it turns off. So we can do this fast or slow, lots of times, or hold it in for a long amount of time. That seems to be working just perfectly.